Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Sorry, can you hear me? Okay, I'm not really hearing myself here. I said hallelujah. Surround me with sound. Surround me with sound. Somebody stand to your feet this morning. I'm ripping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from. I'm ripping. I'm ripping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole. I'm ripping. I'm ripping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole. From. Amen. Amen. We're not singing to feel good this morning. It's not because the rhythm is good, that's what we're singing. I'm singing because I'm convinced about what I'm singing about. It's going to be my experience because uh, that's my reality as I stand. And how do I take back what the devil stole from me? By my faith. Why? I have the backing of dominion. Amen. So there's dominion. So I have requisite authority to take back what has been stolen. Dominion confers authority on you. Amen. And so your voice must be obeyed. Amen. And the devil has to release whatever it is he has stolen from you. He's a thief. He's a thief. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's a thief. So it is not his. You are the child. It belongs to you, not to the thief. I'm ripping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole. I'm ripping. I'm ripping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole. I'm ripping. I'm ripping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the I'm ripping. I'm ripping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil and I rejoice. And I rejoice today. I shall, I shall recover. I rejoice. And I rejoice today. I shall recover. I rejoice one more time. And I rejoice today. Today, today, today. today. I shall recover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When, when, when are you recovering it all? Today! When, when are you recovering all the devil stole? Today! Why are we so sure that it is today? Now, faith is. Why are we so sure that it is today that we're recovering? Now, faith is. So somebody say, faith is now. Now, faith is. So whether you come from the left or you come from the right, it is still the same. Hallelujah. Today is the day of recovery. Today is the acceptable day. This hour is the hour of your comeback. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. They stole your land. Take it back. They stole your position. Take it back. They stole your place. Take it back. You have lost time. Take it back. You have lost opportunities. Take it back. You have lost money. Take it back. You have suffered business losses. Can you take it back? You have lost your status. Can you take it back? How? By faith. Somebody say, I take it back by faith. The victory of the cross was for my sake. By virtue of the blood of Jesus, I take it back. Your dominion was conferred upon you by the power and the potency of the blood. So take it back. But if you're okay with how things are, some people don't even realize that without them losing anything, they still need a comeback. Until you are operating at the capacity designed by God for you, you can't be satisfied. So is this the best of God for you? Then you will be deemed to be complacent. Complacency is having a false sense of satisfaction, a false sense of arrival. That's complacency. Who is complacent in the house? You are just okay the way you are. Everything is fine. I don't want it beyond you. Then you are myopic. And I dare say you are selfish. Because there are others that can drink from your flow. Someone listening to me? You don't live for yourself alone. If you live for yourself, you die for yourself. Hallelujah. 
there is a path and a program and a portion of God assigned to me that I'm here to enter into. My comeback seasons will take me there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, Holy Spirit of God, breathe upon us, stir up our hearts, transform our thinking, change our lot, open our eyes to see your picture, help us to see what you are seeing, so that we can begin to think the way you think. Let our experiences be such that many will benefit, generations will benefit from the outworkings of your power in us. Oh, the glory and the honor is yours, Jesus. If grace were not to be grace, it wouldn't reach you. If grace were to be limited, it wouldn't get to you, it wouldn't get to me. Grace is unlimited. So the dealings of God with us should not be limited. They should be limitless so that many can benefit from it. Is someone listening to me? May our lives count. Can you help me with the sound? May our lives count. Just a little more volume. My life will count. I don't know about you. In time and eternity, my life will count. And long after I have gone, they will still be thanking God for my life. Lord, that is my desire. In Jesus' name. Ask the Lord to speak to you this morning before you take your seat. Lord, speak to me this morning and speak through me this morning. We receive the totality of your mind and counsel for this service. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Sweet Samuels, thank you. Instrumentalists, thank you. Everyone on duty this morning, thank you. Security department outside, thank you. Greeters who welcomed us to church today, thank you. Aesthetics who prepared this place since yesterday and walked again this morning, thank you. Ushers, thank you. Technical, thank you. Those in sound, uh, those in rock media, thank you. You know, everyone walking, instrumentalists, everyone walking, thank you. And those of us who are sitting down, who just walked in majestically this morning, without lifting a finger and everything is just good and you sat and you're enjoying the service, thank you. Choir, have I thanked you? Thank you. Amen. You may not be seeing them in large numbers at this year's anniversary. Is that okay? Because there's no, there's no superstar in the kingdom of God. Only Jesus Christ is a superstar. No man is superstar. Only Christ is superstar. Some people show up during anniversary and after anniversary you don't see them again. No. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm just saying this so that you have an idea of some things. That, ah, why is the choir so few this year? Now you know. In case there are few. I've not said anything. I've simply prepared our hearts. Amen. A pastor is not meant to be popular. A pastor is meant to be principled. And it's principled based on what God's word says. Thank you. Restoration. Notice that if you saw the banner, it didn't say the concluding part. It said the concluding and then there are dots because there's no end to it. There's no end to experiencing God. Anytime you experience another dimension of God, it's another level of restoration. Anytime you experience another dimension of God, it's another level of the dealings of God with you. Amen. Because every time he keeps putting us back to original shape. Amen. And we have said that as far as restoration is concerned, that it is us going back to original shape. Let's read our anchor scripture and then we proceed from where we stopped last week. Joel chapter 2 from verse 23 to 27. Joel chapter 2 from 23 to 27. Be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. Can we learn to rejoice in the Lord our God? Can we learn to be glad in the Lord our God? For he had given you the former rain moderately. Every dealing of God you knew up until now was moderate. But something greater than moderate is coming your way. Are you ready to receive? Am I ready to receive? I am ready to receive. Something greater than moderate is coming. And it will cause to come down for me the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So there shall be a combination of the experiences of old and a new one entirely at this time. Both will combine and come upon the life of Tulu Alokwe. I don't know about you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I need to be sure that you are with me. That's why I mentioned my name. Okay. 24, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. There will be things to see. 
There'll be yield. There'll be harvest. We just sang in that song, I'm reaping the harvest. God promised me, taking back what the devil stole from me. And I rejoice today because I recover it all. 25. And I will restore to you the years. And I will restore to you the years. And I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. My great army which I sent among you. The Lord did that to correct them. The devil stole from us not to correct us but to keep us down and to remain the devil. Because the devil must steal, the devil must kill, and the devil must destroy. So the devil must steal, the devil must kill, and the devil must destroy. You must have heard the story of a man who, who had a pet. And the pet happened to be a venomous snake. And uh, they were good friends until one day the snake bit him. And he felt, for goodness sake, we've been together. I've had you for a long time. How come must you bite me? And the snake bit him so badly. And then they had to tell him, it is in the nature of the snake to bite. It is in the nature of God to restore. It is in the nature of the devil to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We must never forget that. 26. And you shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. I have a leading to make it personal to myself. You can join me if you will. And I shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord my God that had dealt wondrously with me. And I, Tulu Alope, shall never be ashamed. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go back to reading normally. 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. When restoration comes, there is no shame. When restoration comes, there is no disgrace. When restoration takes place, there's no disappointment. There's no distress. When restoration takes place, everything is just good. There is gladness. There is joy. There is rejoicing. And we have said this is that season much more than ever before when we are to consciously expect to be restored and to recover every lost ground. Wherever, wherever things have slowed down, expect for things to pick up from now in the name of Jesus. Why? So that God can be God. And so that you can be seen to be a child of God, so that you can be a good advertisement of the goodness of God, a good advertisement of the glory of God. Hallelujah. May somebody desire to serve the God you serve. May somebody desire to know the God you serve. May somebody desire to follow your footsteps because they can see that God is with you. Hallelujah. Oh, what a way to advertise. What a way to proclaim the gospel. What a way to win souls. What a way to, to evangelize. Amen. That somebody sees your life and says, I want to be like you. I want to serve your God. Hallelujah. Do you, do you remember the story of Ruth? Remember the story of Ruth? And Naomi, Naomi, you know, stood in spite of the fact that she had lost her husband and lost her two sons. She still did not deny the God whom she was serving. She did not go negative. You know, she could have gone negative. She could have uh, said, what am I living for? I'm not worth living. Let me just die. She maintained her calmness and she said, I'm going back to the land of my God. Because the Israel or the people of Israel of old understand where the temple was was an issue for them. Well, you might say there was no temple there, but there was the tabernacle of meeting. There was the Ark of the Covenant. Where the Ark was was an issue for them. Amen. And that was the only nation at that time that had God, Jehovah God as God. Every other nation must come through them as a proselyte to access God. Otherwise, every other nation was in idolatry. Amen. And Ruth looked and said, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you die, I will die. What an advertisement her life was, Naomi's life. There must have been something Ruth saw in that woman that made her to say, I'm going with you. May somebody look at you soon, soon, soon. How do you say that in English? May somebody look at you soon, soon, soon and say, I'm going with you. The God you serve, I want that God to be my God. The way you pray, I want to be praying like that. The way you read your Bible, I want to read my Bible like that. Hallelujah. May your Christian life motivate someone and encourage someone and influence people. Amen. Matthew 7, 20. Whereby by their fruits, we shall know them. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. So, we have said so much about restoration. But I want to start from... The story of David, because uh, I love that song, the choir song. Remember in 1 Samuel 30, everything the king had. Well, he was yet to ascend the throne, but he had been anointed king as at that point in time. And he was a vagabond, or shall I say, a king in waiting. 
he was still vagabond king elect. A vagabond does not have a fixed address. Hallelujah. Amen. So he was roving, always on the move. And uh, in the process of wanting to go fight against Israel, quote and unquote, now their camp was raided by the Amalekites and everything they had, himself and the 600 men with him were taken. Everything, everything was taken. And they got back to base and everything was gone, everyone was gone. And men of war, fighters began to cry. When men, when fighters cry, I have the story of an 84-year-old man. He had, he's had serious illnesses. And when they discovered the latest illness, they discovered it was something that was terminal in nature that had been brewing inside the man. And they said, Daddy, for goodness sake, why haven't you complained? Haven't you been in pain? And the man is an ex-soldier. He retired from the army many years ago as a major. He said, I am a soldier. We have been trained to bear pain at 84 they said we have been trained to bear pain when they say old oh, soldier never die it's not just a saying no it's not a cliche that was the training for them then i don't know now amen they said we've been trained to bear pain so this is pain that is terminal in nature because the condition is terminal and the man is keeping quiet can you imagine that anyway so these men were crying, soldiers, trained soldiers, crying. This was serious. And David said, before the journey of recovery can begin, I need a word. How many people will serve God at that level this year? That before I venture, I need a word. Before I take a step, Lord, what are you saying? That is how the journey of restoration begins. So the servant of God, David said, bring me an ephod. And he inquired for the word of God. Get the principle. The word. Whether in the old and the new, the word is the word. Am I right or wrong? The word of God is the word of God. He said, give me a word. He said, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake them? See the question he was asking. The other day I was saying, wisdom did not just come out of the mouth of Solomon. He met wisdom at home. David, his father, was a wise man. The Bible says, in the hearts of all them that are wise-hearted, the Lord has put wisdom. Talking about David. David was a wise man. He said, Lord, hey, go. Let, let's discuss this thing very well. I, I don't want to incur additional losses. Shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Shall I recover? Each question was at a level. Shall I pursue? Progress. Shall I overtake? More progress. Shall I recover complete progress? And the Lord said, yes, you will pursue. No angel will pursue for you. You will pursue. No lecturer will pursue for you. You will pursue by yourself. Hallelujah. The journey of this year is the journey of your faith. Amen. So you will pursue. You will overtake. Meaning, for how long you've been at that level does not matter. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will overtake and without fail recover all. And on the strength of that, of that word, King David was minded to embark on that journey. And they got to a river. And 200 men said, we can't go on. We are tired. And the other said, eh, okay. But 400. Do you, know, do you understand what the, who they were pursuing? They were pursuing the army of a whole nation. They didn't even know the number of people in the band of those raiders. They didn't know how many they were. It was a blind risk. But the word of God had come. Listen, you are taking a risk this year, but the word of God is backing you up. Go. You can't fail. Go. You won't come back empty-handed. Go. Because the word is backing you. But if there is no word, don't go. You know, how we speak our English in Nigeria, we put O. Oh. Don't go. If there is no word. An expatriate came to Nigeria many years ago. She brought her son, you know. And uh, after a few weeks, the boy will say, I want to go home. 
When the white boy is saying, I want to go home, I want to eat my food, oh, the mother says, where is this oh coming from? They say, it's in Nigeria. We put emphasis on everything. Hallelujah. So don't forget that. Get a word from God. Get a word from God. Now, before Jesus went to the cross, because we're talking about Christ and our restoration, before Jesus went to the cross, he was condemned. In fact, it was because he was condemned that he had to go to the cross. And there was restoration in it for us. His condemnation turned out for, what is the opposite of condemnation? Justification. Today, we have justification, restoration. Hallelujah. While he was on the cross, what was he? On the cross, it became a cross. Galatians 3.13. The Bible tells us, cost is any man that hangeth on the tree. So Christ became a cross in order to restore us. The opposite of, of cost. The blessing. So he put the blessing on us. He was made a cross. We were made the blessing. Can someone say, I am in the blessing. I am a beneficiary of the blessing. The blessing works in me whether I'm awake or asleep. The blessing is always at work in me. Hallelujah. Somebody had an experience. I'll, 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 I'll just cut part of the story and, and, and reduce the story. Amen. <laughs> Madeline Lengel said Jesus Christ was not a theologian. He was God who told stories. So stories. Okay. What's the story? Somebody gave her, cutting long story short, somebody gave her a ring, very expensive diamond ring. And then the ring had two, two petals, two diamond petals on top. And inside the petals, something always moved. Especially whenever she was moving her hands, the thing. So one day she went to the supermarket to buy something, grocery store. And one man who was shopping, you know, just looked, happened to look at her finger. And he saw the thing move. He said, lady, your ring moved. Something moved on your ring just now. I saw something. He was scared. And she smiled. She beat his her ring. This man said, yes, it moves all the time. It moves all the time. And the Lord spoke to her. The blessing is at work all the time. The blessing works all the time. Whether you are awake or, or asleep, the blessing works all the time. You are about going under the trailer. The blessing works all the time. You are about to be defeated. The blessing works all the time. Know that you are in the blessing. The blessing is working for you. Can someone say, the blessing is working for me? Ah, the blessing is working for me, working through me. The blessing is upon me. Hallelujah. Why? Because of a cross. On the cross, he was made a cross that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, through faith. And we might receive the promise that the Spirit of God has given. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I'm in the blessing. After the cross, what happened? There was restoration again. After the cross, where did Jesus go? He went to hell. Today, believers who die, we don't go to hell anymore because he has tasted hell. Not only did Jesus taste hell, he took the keys of hell and death. That place is locked against believers in Christ. If a believer happens to go, there are no entrance for him. The door is locked. Why? A believer should go to heaven now. Hallelujah. Part of our restoration. I mean, that's amazing. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Okay, so what are the implications of restoration? You know, I've told you that I'm not preaching this message. I'm teaching it. The implications of restoration. Number one implication is this. It makes men to fear God. When restoration takes place, men fear God. When restoration takes place, men fear God. Men fear God. Because they can see what God can do. And they tend to honor him in fear. We call it reverence or reverential fear of God. Matthew chapter 27 from verse 50. Let's read. Matthew 27 from verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. This was Jesus on the cross. And behold, the veil of a temple was rent or was torn in two from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks were rent and the graves were opened. Can you imagine? Restoration. The graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. People saw them. They appeared unto many. Why? The first fruits of them that slept gave that shout. The firstborn of all of God's creation liberated them from hell. Hallelujah. 
And when, now, when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, what did they do? They feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. That restoration they saw made them fear God. They feared greatly. And they said, this was the Son of God. But the Bible mentions a man, they are called a centurion. The Bible does not tell us his name. Church tradition tells us his name. His name was Longinus. Anybody that Longinus in church? He became a disciple of Jesus from that day. He became a follower of Jesus from that day. He died a martyr's death subsequently. He was executed. But he was a Roman. A Jew could not be a centurion. I hope you know. He was a Roman. That day he saw something that made him believe that truly this was the son of God. He got born again. Your restoration will make men fear God. Number two. Restoration encourages believers to trust God more. When we say restoration, when we are restored, we trust God more. You are encouraged to do more. It's like um, first time, form one, for me. I didn't know what secondary school was all about. I was in modern house. I didn't know what secondary school was all about. I was trying to adjust, you know, to life in secondary school. Guess what my position was? First time, form one. I still remember. I came 15th in the class. 15 out of 30 or so, you know? I was purely average. And I looked at the reply, I said, how am I, how am I going to take this home to my father? So anyway, it was eating. I made sure it was when it was eating. You know, you can't get annoyed when you are eating. The food will go the other way. It's wisdom. Oh. So it was eating, and he liked to eat eba. He was eating his eba with free fish, something like that. I said, sir, my report. I said, okay, I'll, I'll look at it when I'm done. <laughs> he gave me time to have escaped. Here you understand. So by the time he looked at it, he called me. He said, This is not a bad performance. You are just starting. I said, eh. He said, Yes. I said, 15. He said, Yes. You can do better. Go and do better. When I heard that, I was encouraged. I said, Ah, eh, hey, okay. So second time, from one, guess what my position was? Second. From number 15 to number two. You don't say number second, you say number two. From number 15 to number 2. Wow. So proudly now, I could just leave my re re report on the table. Let him see it anywhere. I didn't have to go when he was eating. <laughs> and so I told you, guess what my result was? Third time from one. First. Not just first in A, I was in 1A. Not just first in A, first overall. For the entire, I say, this thing works. When there is restoration, it encourages others to trust God more. That's the point we're trying to make. Amen. If we open our Bibles to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12 and verse 9, it says, John 12, 9, it says, Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they may see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Lazarus had been restored. He had been raised from the dead. So, again, when they heard that Jesus was in their town, they came not to look at Jesus alone, but to see Lazarus that he had raised from the dead. They were encouraged that this was the Messiah. They could trust him more. Amen. Hallelujah. Another scripture, Mark chapter 7 and verse 32. Mark 7 and verse 32. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they besought him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and his feet and touched the man's tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed, that's like groaning, and saith unto him, Ephata, that is, be opened, and straight away, somebody says straight away, straight away the man was restored. His ears were opened, the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake again, and he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it. Why? They couldn't keep quiet. Hmm. It encourages believers to trust God more. And they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has done all things well. He maketh both the deaf and the dumb to speak. They were encouraged to trust God more. May somebody be encouraged to serve God because of you. So your restoration will be speaking to the lives of men. Hallelujah. May every dry tree become a fruitful tree. May every dry land become a fruit-bearing land in this house in the name of Jesus. Number three, implication. 
it authenticates the gospel restoration authenticates the gospel when something is authenticated it is given originality we know it is original hmm. it is not a copy it's not fake it authenticates the gospel the gospel of saint john chapter 9 again from verse 25 to 27 the story of our friend i call him our friend because that man was exceptional he answered and said whether he be a sinner or or not or assuming the man was nigerian he said i don't know one thing i know that whereas i was blind now i see then they said to him the jewish establishment said to him what did he do to you how opened he thine eyes he answered them ah you want to hear again i've told you i've told you already and you did not hear that man was our friend believe me he was trying to tell the jewish establishment they are seniors in Judaism that can't you hear are your ears blocked when I said it the first time didn't you hear that's the implication let's read again I've told you already and you did not hear wherefore do you want to hear it again so you want to hear it again in other words do you also want to be his disciples you know that man had a country they should have slapped him <laughs> look at verse 30 the man answered and said to them why hearing is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is and yet he opened my eyes we're saying a restoration authenticates the gospel this man was saying this jesus is original now you we know that god heareth not sinners he started preaching doctrine to them but if any man be a worshiper of god and doeth his will him he heareth since the world began was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was one blind and if this man were not of God, he could do nothing. What was he saying? This man is of God and so he can open my eyes. He was authenticating, giving credence to the gospel. May that be our testimony this year. May people look at us and may our lives confirm the fact that the word works. The word works. Amen. Lastly, it causes rejoicing and praises to God. Implications of restoration rejoicing and praises to god we started by reading joel chapter 2 and verse 26 and it says and you shall eat in plenty when you are restored there'll be plenty you won't eat in measures amen it won't be a question of just put something in you know you don't have to be filled just just eat something it won't be a question of it is whatever we find we will eat so that we can keep body and soul together but when you are eating in plenty you are not eating anything you find you eat what you want amen may you eat what you want it's a blessing of god do you understand what I'm saying? When somebody is sick, he can't eat what he wants. Praise the Lord. When somebody is in lack, he or she cannot eat what he wants. May we not be sick. May we not be in lack. Yeah. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. That's rejoicing. That's joy. That's joy. The Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 9. That's joy, that's rejoicing. The Bible says, uh, and he entered into a ship, verse 1, and passed over and came into his own city. Which city was the city? Capernaum. That was the city. That was his ministry headquarters. Archaeologists even believe that they have found his house. That he had a nice building, small, cozy building. Amen. He entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of a palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus seen their faith. Jesus seen their faith. Faith can be seen. Jesus seen their faith. May the Lord see your faith this year. Meaning your faith is tangible. Your faith is real. Your faith is practical. And Jesus seen their faith. Said unto the sick of a palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. A man of God came here years ago. And he was preaching one of our anniversaries. And he said he was owing so much. He couldn't pay school fees. He couldn't pay house rent. He needed so much money. And he was praying. He was praying. And he said one day he asked for his wife's wrapper. And uh, he wrapped himself in his wife's wrapper. And he began to sing funeral song. How do you remember? Sorry. Sorry, sorry. That was the song he was singing, funeral song. 
And the wife said, Mister, are you planning to die? What kind of song is that? You better wake up to your responsibility. You are paying these bills. You are not going to die. He said they had a loud bang on the gates. Or maybe I'm robbers. They had gunshots. Bang, 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 bang. He said he started praying. He said the wife said, I thought you wanted to die just now. He said, I said that was not enough. Well, see, believe in God that he, all these deaths must be cleared. There was a loud bang on the gate. And when they opened the gate, there was a young man who had a mental issue that the parents brought. Oh. He said, I thought it was somebody that came to give me money. We say we need money. It's a mentally deranged person you brought. What kind of answer to prayer is this? He said, before they knew what was going on, the guy jumped into the well. Ah, he said, he said nobody must come and die in his compound. <laughs> Why am I saying this? The man was sick of the palsy. You would have thought Jesus would say, son, get up and be healed. He said, thy sins are forgiven thee. What did we take? What are you throwing? Is someone listening to me? Praise the Lord. But it, was cons it is always consistent with his nature to address the root of a problem. The root of the man's problem was sin. The palsy was a symptom. The cause was sin. He addressed the root when he said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Let's, let's read again. Hallelujah. So that was Matthew chapter, one, uh, chapter 9 from verse 1. And verse 2, Behold, they brought unto him a man sick of a palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of a palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. He's speaking blasphemy. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it's easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, what did they do? They marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. They were giving glory to God. They were giving praises to God because of what happened. Every act of restoration causes glory to go to the Lord. Amen. Don't forget that. Now where I'm going, action points. What we must do to enjoy restorations. Number one, expect it. God will always work with our expectations. Expect it. Praise the Lord. Expect it. A sister was believing God for a spouse. She was already getting old. You know, I wonder why I'm telling so many stories this morning. And a guest minister came from out of town to their church. And uh, the pastor said, oh, servant of God, please join faith with this sister. We are trusting God for her, for a, a life partner. And the man, the guest minister said, what kind of husband are you believing God for? Husband, no, no. You know, some people end up marrying husband, no, no. They end up marrying just any man. Any guy, any good guy. Any good guy is vague. It's not definitive. What do you mean, any good guy? Break down that good. So, he helped her to tailor her desires in specific terms. What kind of occupation? I hope you know that God is not against that. What kind of Height, I think it was, she must have given someone like my height. Amen. Praise the Lord. She must have given someone like the complexion of my skin or my nose, you know. Praise the Lord. If you are not proud of how you look, now you serve you. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with how I look. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyway, he helped her to define every feature she wants in the husband that she wanted to marry. I'm painting a picture. And based on that, they now prayed. Two years or so down the line, the man came visiting again. And the pastor said, oh, by the way, she's married. The man said, who is married? He said, the lady you brought. Oh, he said, okay, one lady like that. Oh, she's married. You know the testimony? A group of teachers or something came for uh, an exchange program in their city. And there was this young, 
handsome, tall, you know, not Gajiri, not too tall, though. she understand. Not the one that will be looking at the center of the head of the wife. Yeah. Leave, just leave me, okay? <laughs> and all the ladies were flocking towards this man because they realized that he was single, he was not married. But this man had his eyes set only on that lady that prayed. And eventually that's how two became four, you know, and they got married. You, you understand what I'm talking about? Amen. Why? She had an expectation in a particular direction. And that released the forces of heaven on her behalf. I hope you know that faith is a trigger. It triggers, it releases the power of God in the direction we send it. That is why faith must be tailored in a particular direction. You don't just say, I'm believing God. For what? Based on what? What are you believing God for? Based on what are you believing God for? That thing that you are believing God for. Faith is specific. Your expectations. This year, expect restorations. Expect it consciously. The Bible says the expectations of the just will not perish with him. One time you just say forever. Let's look at that in Psalm 9. Praise the Lord. Let's read. Psalm 9 and verse um, 18. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. The mother of Jesus had an expectation. They were at a wedding. Jesus was invited. Jesus went with his disciples. Theologians believe that the couple or one of the uh, people getting married was a relative of Jesus. So that was why his mother was there. That was why he was there. And that was why he took his disciples along. You know? So he too had a stake, so to speak, in the party. And it was enjoying the wedding reception. Amen. And then the mother said to him, they have run out of wine. Because it was not as if they lacked wine. They ran out of wine while the party was in progress. What could be more disgraceful? If they started without wine, everybody will know that this party is wineless. But they ran out of wine. They had been serving wine before. Have you attended a reception where those in front of you were served? And those behind you were served? And they left your line out? You'll be turning. Turning. You'll be turning. And if you want to be cool and composed, you wouldn't want to talk. But some people beside you may not be cool and composed. They say, Auntie... I want to uncle, ah, uh, Otiton. Oh, where have you been? Otiton. Kiletin, what have you been looking at? Otiton. Yours truly, I don't go for socials without putting something in my stomach from my house. I will eat. Before. So when I get there, I'll be laughing, I'll be cracking jokes. In fact, they wouldn't know when I'm leaving. I didn't go there because of their food. Stop going to people's party because of their food. That's not part of the message. Let's go back to the message. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woman, what have you got to do with me? By the way, that was not derogatory. That was okay by their culture. She said in verse 5 of John's Gospel chapter 2. Can you bring it up? She said in verse 5. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Do you know she had an expectation? In her son, she also had an expectation in his, in his ability to perform. At that point, without noise, without any shakenomics, miraclenomics, no vibes. What are those pots? They said our ceremonial pots. Fill them with water. They filled them with water. Excuse me, was, was there a magic wand in the hands of Jesus? You know, magic wand that magicians will use. You know? Bear now, go and give the governor of the feast. They bore, they went to give the governor of the feast. The man tasted wine, he, his head scattered. He said, where are you getting this from? He said, this quality is superior quality. Superior than the one that finished. <laughs> Noiseless restoration effortless manifestations of the glory of God beyond what you can fathom, beyond what you can imagine. In fact, you will make progress 
astronomical progress and there will be no noise. They simply realize, but boy, it's a move, Do you know what I'm talking about? Ah, so you are still here. Come and see that guy. Ah, so you are still here. Come and see that babe. No, talk about guy. What about that babe? Come and see that babe. Come and see what's going on. Do you know she's pregnant now? And she's been trusting God for conception for many years. The day I see her, I almost fell down. They were almost fall down. You've not seen somebody looking at you before and, and almost hit the tree. May you have such repeated experiences as testimonies. No noise! In fact, the couple did not know how wine came back. They simply realized that everybody was saying, oh, honestly, we enjoyed this wedding. What a wedding. This is wonderful. They, they did not, it must be later that they had the story. You know, they won't be able to leave the high table where they are. You know, because uh, everything is just... How did you feel on your wedding day? For those who are married, how did you feel on your wedding day? Me, and I'm a normal human being. On my wedding day, I felt we were having a carnival. I was very happy. I was waving at everybody. You know, you know, you know, you know my wife is not like me. You know, she's a bit on the reserved side. Me, I'm not reserved. I said, hey, you came. Ah, oh, God bless you. I go, the following day, I said, but where are all those people? She said, they won't go to their houses. I said, I want to learn here. They've gone. He said, no, they won't go. They will stay with us. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Expect restorations. Number two, prepare for restoration. You can expect something and not prepare for it. You can be pregnant. You know that the baby is coming and you have not prepared your bag. Your hospital bag, you've not prepared. You've not, paid, you've not been going for antenatal. Does it happen? It happens. There are some people, they know that the baby is coming, but they are not making preparations. Am I right? Some will say, I don't have the money. Some will say, well, I, don't, I, don't even, I didn't plan for this child. I've, I've had calls to counsel over the years. Somebody that was almost causing the pregnancy. I said, ah! I said, it's bad for you and it's bad for the child. It's not the fault of a child that the child is coming to the world. It is your fault and the fault of whoever impregnated you. So set two between you and the person that impregnated you, not this child. I hate the baby, I hate blah, 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 blah. In one case, that one lost the pregnancy. Because, so prepare for restorations. Help me tell your neighbor, prepare. Prepare for restorations, amen. It will not just drop out of the sky. Mm -mm. Prepare. No, we started by saying expect to be restored. Remember the man at the beautiful gate? He looked at Peter and John expecting to receive something. God will honor your expectation. Number two, prepare. Let's look at the story of Elisha. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 6. Are we getting anything this morning? 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1. And the sons of a prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too narrow for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan the river Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, log of wood, and let us make a place, so they wanted to build a structure, where we may dwell a house. And he answered, you can go. And one said, be content, Oga. I pray thee, go with thy servants. And one said, name not mentioned, and one said, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. May we be inspired to ask right this year. May we be inspired to think right this year. May we be inspired to decide right this year. May our decisions be the decisions of the Holy Ghost this year. In the name of Jesus. Do you know there are some one-line sentences or one-line prayers that are very powerful? One of them, Lord, confuse the counsel of Ahitophel. Just one sentence, just one line, very powerful. It changed everything. It preserved the king from being destroyed. It damaged the plot of Absalom and his people in council. Just one sentence. This man said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And he said, I will go with thee. That was a defining prayer. That changed the entire story. Let's read on. I believe that was verse 3. Let's read on. Verse 4. So he went with them, and when they came to Jericho, they cut down wood. 
But as one was felling a beam, because you fell trees, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down the stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Guess what? They did not go on that journey without God's presence. Huh? But I don't see God in what we just read. But you saw the prophet under the old covenant. The prophet was the custodian of the now word of God. You wanted to know the mind of God, it was the prophet. If you wanted to know the general will of God, you go to the priest and they consult the Urim and the Thummim for the yes and no answer. Praise the Lord. So, 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 so. When that man said in verse 3, be content, I pray thee, O God, go with us. He was saying, let the word accompany us. I don't think he had any inkling that anything would happen but I believe he was inspired to say, come with us, sir. And that's all we need. God does not usually show us the total picture. Who is here? You've seen the total picture. Canaan. God doesn't show the total picture. For we know in part. And we prophesy in part. And when perfection is come, then we shall know. But wait till that time. Hallelujah. For now, we know in part. Because uh, for now, we walk by faith. For now, we live by faith. When we cross over, there's no need for faith. Everything is there. But while we're here, it is by faith. Here a little, here a little. There a little, there a little. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. That is how it is here. He shows you a little, you take a step. He shows you more, you take another step. He shows you more, you take another step. And when, when you look back, you see, I've come a long way. But it was those little, 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 little steps that led you where you are. And looking back now, say, I've come a long way. Don't despise the little steps of faith. Is someone listening to me this morning? So they had the presence of God and they also were present. So when there was an adversity or better still, when there was a loss and the iron accent fell, and like I always love to say, it was borrowed from an Ijeshama. Pastor, no, it was borrowed from Anijebuma. No, okay, it was borrowed from Anijebujeshama. Yes. And the man before he released it, he said, nothing must happen to this accent. My marks are on it. I know everything about it. If it changes, you are buying another one. If you can't buy another one, I seize your firstborn son. Oh, guy, over this accent is as serious as that. Otherwise, leave my accent. So, I give you my words, and nothing will happen. Maybe that was why that man asked in verse 3, Oh, God, go with us. Hmm, because nothing must happen to this accent. If you are with us, nothing will happen. And the thing fell. The word was with them, it still fell. But it is because the word has the power to restore. So there's restoration in the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So the man of God said, show me where it fell. And he took a stick and threw it away. I mean, like we all know, what is the, what is the chemical connection or the, the, the physical connection, I don't understand, or the electromagnetic connection between a piece of stick and metal? Nothing whatsoever. I did some little science in school. We used to go to laboratory. Nothing whatsoever. I don't see that connection. But the iron axe said, the Bible says it did swim. That means it floated. You know what that means? After a while, it can sink again. So, but God's presence made it float. Their own presence or man's presence made them pick it up. You must be there. So prepare to be restored. You must be there. God is there. You must be there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Joseph stood before Pharaoh and interpreted the dream of Pharaoh to him, all he was asked to do was, the king had a dream, come and interpret the dream. The king told him his dream, he interpreted the dream. Business of the day finished, but not for Joseph. 
God was there, gave him the, the interpretation. But Joseph was there. He could recommend a solution. Now, let Pharaoh look for a man, discreet and wise, that he may appoint to oversee the affairs so that he can administer the seven years of abundance. Uh, and Pharaoh looked around and said, who else is there that we can appoint? Listen, was that part of a dream? What Joseph said, was it part of a dream? Huh. So let's recognize opportunities the Lord will bring our way this year. Praise the Lord. Prepare, prepare, prepare for restoration. Prepare for restoration. Prepare for restoration. I'll just read the scripture. I'm not going to explain. Isaiah 54, let's read together from verse 1. Sing, O barren. Why? Thou that did not break, thou that did not bear, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Who? The barren woman. Thou that did not travel with child, no labor pains, but you are to break forth into singing. For more are the children of the desolate, that is the barren, than the children of a married wife, said the Lord. That's serious. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Who will live there when you are buried? And it says, enlarge the place of thy tent. God has something to do. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Let them stretch for the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords. Strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. I thought someone will say amen. And thy seed. And thy seed. She started by being barren. Now thy seed. Your story will change. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shalt not re remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. You can write it down and meditate on it when you get home. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Action point. Number three. We started by saying expect restorations. Number two said prepare for restoration. So let the Holy Ghost lead you. Amen. And number three, pray for restoration. Pray for restoration. Easily I could have put prayer under preparation for restoration. But I made it stand alone. Pray for restoration. Something happened in the life of David. He had an encounter and he prayed not out of doubt but out of conviction. The prophetic word had come to him. You will not fail to have a man to sit on the throne of Israel. It was a word of prophecy. Guess what? The king still prayed about that word of prophecy. Let's read. Second Samuel uh, chapter 7. Maybe I'll paraphrase from verse 12. Second Samuel chapter 7 from verse 12. Please, whenever you are coming to church this year, come with something to take notes with. Maybe your tablet, you know, your iPad, whatever, or your good old pen and paper because a piece of paper never forgets hallelujah second samuel 7 from verse 12 and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers this was nathan talking to moses i will uh, to david i will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of thy bowels and i will establish his kingdom who was this talking about solomon he shall build an house for my name and i will establish the throne of his kingdom forever i will be his father and he shall be my son and if he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before thee. And thine house, notice, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. What a word. So David knew that his dynasty was already established. Nothing will change that. God said forever. According to all these words and according to all these visions, so did Nathan speak unto David. Look at verse 18. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord and said, Ah, who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hither to? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God. But thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the man of man, O Lord God? Is this how you are? Is this how you deal with your own? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant for thy word's sake and according to thine own heart as thou done all these things to make thy servant know them wherefore thou art great O lord god for there is none like thee neither is any other god beside thee according to all that we have heard with our eyes or with our ears and what one nation in the earth is like thy people even like israel whom god went to redeem for a people unto himself 
and to make him a name and to do for you great things and terrible for thy hand or for thy land before thy people which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt from the nations and their gods for thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever and thou Lord art become their God and now verse 25 and now O Lord God the word see everything David said up to verse 25 was to worship and praise God and if I may say it this way to make Father God feel good. Hey, get. He wanted Father God to feel good. Okay, can I be a bit more contemporary? He hyped Father God. And David hyped him. Sure you understand? He hyped him. See verse 25. And now, O oh Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever. And do as thou hast said. The God not know that he will fulfill his word. Psalm 89 verse 34. What does he say? My covenant will I not break. Neither will I alter that which my lips have spoken. God knows he won't alter. But the king still went and prayed. You know what he was doing? Internalizing the word. Personalizing the word. Making it become flesh and blood unto him. This year, every word God gives to you, pray that word. Pray it out. Pray those words out in prayer. Do you understand? From scripture, pray it out from the Bible. Pray it out exactly the way it is. He said you will eat in plenty and you shall be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who had dealt wondrously with you. Pray it out like that. Hallelujah. Listen, it's a spiritual principle. When we return his word to him the way he gave it to us. Homologio, that word, it says to say what God has said. He expects us to say what he has said to us. Give it back to him. When you return the word of God to him, it comes back to you. The words that I have spoken, so shall my words be that have, that have declared. They shall not return to me void. So God's word, when it comes, must always return. When it is not returning void, it is returning with faith. Always send his word back to him in faith. Prayer helps us to do that. Pray for restorations. Is somebody with me this morning? Pray for restoration. Get that word and use that word to pray. And you will see the glory of God. But guess what? We all, as many as have been redeemed in the blood of the Lamb of God, are beneficiaries of the goodness of God. We're beneficiaries of restoration. We're beneficiaries of heaven's visitations. We're beneficiaries of heaven's release. We're, we're beneficiaries of the good hands of God. Are you a beneficiary? Then say it with me this morning. I'm a beneficiary of the visitation of God. I'm a beneficiary of the goodness of God. I'm a beneficiary of the favor of God. I'm a beneficiary of recovery after recovery. Yeah, yeah. I'm a beneficiary of restoration after restoration, of visitation after visitation. Can someone say I'm a beneficiary of divine? Divine harvests, diverse kinds of harvests. Uh, this year, I'm a beneficiary. Why is that so? He's the God of all grace. Uh, he's the giver of all grace. He gives liberally to all men. He does not upbraid. He upbraids not. He does not discriminate. He will not say, I will give you, I won't give you. I will give you. You, you are not handsome. I won't give you. You, you are ugly. I won't give you. You, you didn't come to church yesterday. Guess what? In spite of your unfaithfulness, grace still stands. Grace does not change our... <laughs> You see, our unfaithfulness does not change grace. Your unfaithfulness. Ah, that is why some people, they take advantage of grace. Don't keep doing that. It's not good. But grace does not judge you based on, on your unfaithfulness. Grace, otherwise, grace is not grace. Grace stands. In fact, grace shines brighter in the face of unfaithfulness. Otherwise, it's not grace. Otherwise, it's not grace. Grace makes bad good. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to Romans 11 and verse 16 as I close. Can you bring it up for us in the New Living Translation? Romans 11. I said New Living. That's right. That's right. Church, we're going to read together. Romans 11. From verse 16. We're going to read this translation together. It's on the screen. New Living Translation. And since Abraham and the other patriarchs were holy, 
their descendants also will be holy. Are we's descendants? We're holy. Just as the entire batch of dough is holy, because the portion given as an offering is holy. So the portion given as an offering that they will offer to the to the Lord on the altar makes holy the entire batch of dough. Because the portion given as an offering is holy. For if the roots of the tree are holy, if the roots of a tree are holy, the branches will be too. Who, who is the root here? Father Abraham. Who are the branches? The seed of Abraham. Let's read on. 17. But some of these branches from Abraham's tree some of the people of Israel have been broken off. And you Gentiles, you Gentiles who were branches from a wild olive tree have been grafted in. Pause. I, Toluanokwe, am a branch from a wild olive tree. Let me correct that. I, Toluanokwe, used to be a branch from a wild olive tree. But now, but now, have been grafted in. Surgeons understand grafting. You know, then they do skin grafting. They cut from somewhere. They now put it somewhere. Hallelujah. Ah, don't remove it. All. So I've been grafted in. Let's read on. So now you also receive the blessing God has promised Abraham and his children, sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. So we, who used to be wild olive branches have been grafted in. What are we doing now? We share in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. I share, I partake of the rich nourishment that flows from God's special olive tree. I hope you know who that special olive tree is. Jesus, the seed of Abraham. The special seed of Abraham. Not after the order of the children of Keturah. Not after the order of Ishmael. The special one. The one that came from the loins of Abraham. The Messiah. What are we doing? We share in the rich nourishment from the roots of God's special olive tree. Please stand to your feet. I share. Not only this year, but for the rest of my days. I share. I, I partake from the rich nourishment that flows from God's special olive tree. Therefore, I will be restored this year. Therefore, I will overcome. It shall be comeback after comeback. Recovery after recovery. Increase after increase. Favor after favor. Strength after strength. Open doors after open doors. Open doors after open doors. Open doors after open doors. And guess what? So that Christ will be made known. So that Christ can be seen. So, no stagnation. No stagnation. You are a partaker of a special nourishment flowing from that olive tree. And when that nourishment is flowing, then death can't hold you down. When that nourishment is flowing, then disease, disaster can't hold you down. So you are free from disaster, free from danger, free from affliction, free from any walk of darkness this year. You are free because you partake from the rich nourishment that flows from that special olive tree. Guess what? The olive, what does it give? What does the olive give? Oil, oil, oil. The oil is what? A symbol of the Holy Spirit. A type of the Holy Spirit. That's oil. That's oil. So leverage on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to bear you on wings this year. That the Holy Spirit will bear you on wings this year. That the Holy Ghost will make you sore. He will renew your strength. He renews your youth. He will show you things to come. He will strengthen and inspire you. He will instruct you. He will strengthen your hands. Yes, He will train your hands for battle. He will teach your fingers warfare. He will help you to overcome. He will keep you in front, not behind. He will keep you on top, not beneath. In the name of Jesus, pray for yourself. Please pray for yourself, my brother. Yes, yes, pray. Let's honor God's presence. Let's honor God's presence. Let's honor God's presence. Let the supply of your spirit, the oil that flows from your presence, I receive, Lord, in manifold dimensions, multiple dimensions, walking in me, 
in the realm of the spirit. Walking in me mentally, emotionally, physically, materially. Walking in me spiritually. Walking wisdom and excellence and discretion in me. Walking power and might and dominion and ability in me. Causing me to enjoy the fullness and the fatness of the root. Yeah, of the root of a special olive tree. In the name of Jesus. Causing me to operate at the speed of the spirit of God. No delays. No afflictions. No disaster, no setbacks in the name of Jesus. And for everyone, for everyone who has suffered a setback here, I come to pronounce your comeback. I come to pronounce your comeback for everyone that has suffered a setback in marriage, a setback in ministry, a setback in business, a setback in academics, a setback in your finances, a setback in your relationships. I pronounce your comeback in the name of Jesus. I pronounce your comeback come back in the name of Jesus I cut off every hand of the adversary I silence every voice of the accuser concerning you in the name of Jesus I speak justification I speak justification I speak life in abundance to the fool till it overflows concerning you in the name of Jesus you recover every lost ground you stand tall you stand in victory hallelujah hallelujah you stand tall. You stand in victory. You stand tall this year. You stand in victory. You stand tall. And you stand in victory. The giant was at the feet of the little boy. You know what I'm talking about? David stood over Goliath. Goliath was down. The boy, inexperienced for war, was the one standing. He could be inexperienced for war, but the spirit living in him, is the, is the man of war hallelujah so the boy stood and the Bible says over him and there was no sword in his hand he had to <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> the weapons of the spirit they are more than enough for you this year to conquer and to overcome hallelujah no physical weapons of, so they are fighting you physically and whatever but the power of God working in you the spirit of God working in you raises a standard over and above them and you stand tall over them in victory I say you stand tall over them in victory in the name of Jesus and they will see you at the front suddenly they will see you at the front and they wonder how and when did he get there and it shall be the doing of the Spirit of God he will transport you from behind the park and put you in front of a park he will transport you supernaturally from behind the park and put you in front of a park this is the year this is the hour. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you. The glory and the honor is yours in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you for eyes that see. Lord, I ask you for ears that hear. For every single one of your people, eyes that see and ears that hear. We will see right, we'll hear right, we'll think right, we'll speak right. Lord, we'll live right this year in the name of Jesus Christ. It will not be the experiences of old. Get said there's a shift and a new experience will begin in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And there is a lady here. I'm sorry, but there's a lady here. Yes, your, 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 your menstrual flow, you still saw it and you're trusting God for conception. It is done in spite of the flow you saw. It is done. In spite of the flow you saw, it is done. Oh, somebody give thanks and give praise to the Lord and exalt his name and worship him and worship him. He's faithful. He's faithful. So do not throw away your confidence with had great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you may inherit the promise. The promise is yours. So hold on to it. Shall we all be seated? With our heads bowed. You know by yourself within your heart that you are yet to become a child of God by giving your heart to Jesus I'm asking you to do it now say Jesus I give my heart to you totally without reservation I give my heart to you Jesus give myself away yes so you are saying Jesus I give my heart to you totally totally without reservation totally Jesus I'm all yours from this moment this moment and say thank you Jesus for accepting me 
and saving me as your own. I will not go back to my old ways. The world is now before me. Or the world, the world is now behind me. And your cross alone is before me. Thank you. If you pray that prayer, just raise your hand and then put it back down. I want to know those that to pray for. We're adults. You pray that prayer, raise up your hand and then put that hand back down. I want to know who I'm to pray for. Whether up on the gallery or down here. I've not seen anything. And I'm not seeing anyone up either. I hope there are people up, up there to check. Okay. Give him praise.